Hey gorgeous. Look at you in front of your new house. This is all ours. Starting from next month. So quite a lot has been done since we was last here. Obviously, tiny front garden has been landscaped. The future plan is to have all of this. Patio, zero maintenance. This is us. <laughs> it's got a nice navy door. Doorbell on. Oh, where's it? Funky little light. And the porchway. This is our front room. You can actually say it's a front room now, eh, Jen? <laughs> And our house, I mean, um, it's still not built, obviously, all around here, but this path takes us, that just behind there is a five acre woods. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. But yeah, there's the, uh, there's the front. And all of this is ours. So we can fit two to three cars, I'd say, just in this driveway bit and the big epic man cave or garage is coming up we're gonna to need to level this at some point but it's massive in here i can just about touch the beams and i'm six foot one and i have to really tiptoe to even touch that we've got power inside two plug sockets and a switch so yeah, we need to figure out what we're going to actually do with this space because realistically it is not going to be used as a garage. But if we were to use it, you could fit a car in here. I don't know if you could fit both. Obviously you could fit a car in here. <laughs> yeah, you get what I mean. So to come out the garage into our gate now ignore the garden obviously they've not put the uh, lawn down yet so this is the garden it's a lot bigger than what i thought it's going to be and my camera well my phone ain't going to do this any justice so the idea is to have all of this patio about halfway or just over halfway and then the rest is going to be that fancy astroturf grass so if i go to the back of the garden through the Jumanji style bit. Are we in Florida? Just listen. We've got like this little area over here, which is directly in the sun. We're not too sure what we're gonna do with that. So you've got the French doors with the glass either side of the door. There's the kitchen. There's me in the reflection. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Very, very happy with this. Can't wait to being in of course his garden south facing so you can already see how much sun we've got a lot basically Ugh. okay so then when we look in I don't know how much we're gonna be able to see because of the reflection hallway grey carpet with the grey lino Jen's utility room just to the right it's so hard it's frustratingly hard to make out but you get the idea and there's our there's our house complete with some some power points i think the plan is to get rid of this gate and put a much better gate in you know for safety just you know you know me in safety right so yeah there's that gorgeous bink bink taking pictures no doubt that is our house i remember this day as if it was yesterday I I just remember being so happy and just feeling yes you know we've got this new house and we took photos and videos and i shared it with friends and family i shared it to my mum and that was the last time i ever spoke with my mum while sending her these photos <sighs> okay so trying to keep this short really um it's been five months since my mum passed away obviously you know jen and i have been here for a couple of months now and the news when when i received a phone call from my dad saying that my mum had passed it was so unexpected i remember speaking to my mum the day before and we were talking about you know she was going to have our sofa our fridge freezer because the new house 
had this stuff already, you know, integrated appliances. We didn't need these things. And we had this family WhatsApp group. And it was a real, that weekend, that planned weekend of our move was a real family kind of help, really. Um, you know, we were all excited for all of us, all excited for it. And um, when we got the phone call, did not believe it. I didn't. Um, at that point, we lived in London. So when we traveled up to Bournemouth, which is where my uh, family are, Jen and I didn't really speak to one another that journey. It was real quiet shock. People say, I just went into shock. That's exactly what happened. And when we arrived in Bournemouth and I remember seeing the um, the ambulance had just left, but we were waiting for the undertakers to arrive. So my mum was still in the property and you know, my dad was there, my sisters, my nieces and nephews. And it was just, it was heartbreaking. It, it just, yeah. And my role instantly was to be strong for my family, um, was to make decisions, was to almost help, help my immediate family through this. I had to step up straight away. There was no like, uh, yeah, uh, all of a sudden, we're in this, you got the pandemic, we have a move, we're moving house, we can't stop that. And six days before this move, my mum unexpectedly passed away. And, and with that, it was this pain, this sadness that we're going through a loss. And also now it's, I have to arrange a funeral, choose coffins, music, financially pay for this, go through probate, um, my sisters are disabled and taking all of this on, you had no choice, but I wouldn't have got through it without Jen. I really, really wouldn't. She's been the rock all of the time of all these years. Um, so from this point on, in terms of the vlogs, they're different, you know, they're not what you'd expect. And People may say, why did you even record? Why did you even do this? Why did you make vlogs? Because if I stop, I will crumble. Even at this moment in time, I need to keep busy. I have so much responsibility and so many things going on that I, if I stop, I'm, I will even be worried. So I enjoy keeping busy and getting things done that need to, to be done. I'm just trying to articulate that it's okay not to be okay and I don't know really where I'm going with this just know that my world ended six days before we moved and I wouldn't have got through and I wouldn't be where I am right now if it weren't for Jen and the help of so many others um, we're just taking one day at a time and yeah so the next vlog that you're going to see is about the final pack before the big move itself. Um, in the Yeah, uh, I don't know. I was going to say in the comments, we'll put, uh, if you're struggling with bereavement, we'll, we'll put a link uh, to the Good Samaritans. Um, personally, if that helps you, that's all good. Having the best pal, um, having good people around you, that to me is the, is the best thing that helps. Having someone to talk to, to reach out, that's the best thing. Um, I know this is not what most of you watching this were expecting, especially from us as we are, you know, we try to be uh, upbeat and positive all the way through. There is no upbeat and positive. My mum passed, I've lost, I lost a piece of myself and I'm gonna, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. Um, I'm just trying to do my best each day at a time. That's all you can do. Life is too short. Do what makes you happy. That is our message. And that's certainly something my mum taught me. 